I'm Dr. Amy Shah, MD and specialist in women's health. Today, I'll be answering your questions from Twitter. This is Hormone Support. Convojo asks, what actually are hormones and how can I remove all of them? You wouldn't want to remove your hormones because then you would literally die. Hormones are chemical messengers that regulate our mood, our attention, our growth, our sexual activity, our disease risk, our hormones, make us who we are. Hormones are part of the endocrine system. People get confused between the nervous system and the endocrine system, but the endocrine system uses liquid chemicals versus electrical impulses. At Alipai asks, can't sleep. Is it just hormone or question mark? Hashtag midnight tweet. Hashtag insomnia. I think a lot of us could have written this tweet because there are a multitude of hormones that are involved in sleep, but the main one you might have heard of is called melatonin. The pineal gland in the brain produces melatonin, and that melatonin actually binds to many different places in the body, including the brain, to tell it to get ready for bed. Melatonin secretion is very influenced by blue light, by stress, and by the things that you eat or drink like caffeine. Melatonin also can be taken by supplement form, but remember, most people are taking way too much melatonin. 10 milligrams of melatonin, 20 milligrams of melatonin, that is way too much. You don't want to suppress your natural release of melatonin. You want to stick to like 0.5 milligrams to 3 milligrams max. At Isabella Gomez asks, how come we don't really talk about how hormones from birth control are the actual devil? Jesus f***ing Christ, it feels like an alien has invaded my body and the alien hates me for no reason. All right, this is a lot to unpack here. Estrogen and progesterone not only work in our reproductive system, but they also have a lot to do with our emotions. When you take oral contraceptive pills, you are giving your body a steady state of estrogen and progesterone every day because it's the rise and fall of the hormones that stimulates the release of the egg from the ovary. What happens though, is that instead of having a cyclical pattern of estrogen and progesterone, you get a constant pattern of estrogen and progesterone. And for some women, that creates emotional changes. At human 5555555 asks, what does low testosterone even feel like or look like? Testosterone is the hormone in our body that's made in the gonads, both in women and men, by the way. It gives you motivation and drive. It also helps you grow your muscles. It helps your mood. It helps your bones. And often when people are aging, they will feel some of the signs of low testosterone. You'll feel tired. You can feel depressed. People will feel like they're getting more fat around the belly. These can be signs of low testosterone or it can be signs of other things because as you know, these are very common complaints. Men have a lot more testosterone than women, and men often are haunted by these sites that say, oh, you need to take these testosterone pellets because they will replace your testosterone. What ends up happening is they get dangerously high levels of testosterone. If you think you have low testosterone, you can get it tested with a simple blood test and make sure that they're not trying to sell you testosterone supplements when you may not need it. At Al Hernandez 262 asks, medical question, what hormone causes my body to crave pizza at 1108 every night? Well, Al, I think it's probably your cortisol late at night telling you to go out and get some pizza. This is way too late for your digestion. I don't think most people realize that hormones and digestion are intimately linked. There are hormones like insulin, GLP-1, insulin-like growth factor, leptin and ghrelin. These hormones literally interact with the digestive system to tell us when we're full, when we're hungry, when we should eat, and what we should do with the food. If you're struggling with cravings late in the evening, it often has to do with high stress levels. So you wanna fix your sleep schedule. At Eco Terrorist asks, can hormones really change your bone structure? How are you gonna get wider hips? I know it's crazy. Hormones are so powerful. For example, there's hormones released during pregnancy that actually relax the ligaments in your body. So you may look like you have wider hips or you have looser joints. In the case of puberty, when estrogen and progesterone are released, for example, in a girl, you start to develop breast tissue and you start to develop wider hips, but it's more because of the fat redistribution than changing of the bone structure.
At Jojo Glimpse asks, why does adrenaline affect the memory? Well, adrenaline actually makes your memory stronger for that moment. For example, if you're in a very scary, stressful situation, you probably remember that really well. Adrenaline and other stress hormones like cortisol and norepinephrine, these are brain and adrenals. This system is meant to keep us safe in danger. So imagine running away from a tiger. It's alerting your brain and the rest of your body that it's time to focus on the task at hand. And so you're not gonna be able to make complex decisions like your taxes or whether you should buy that house during that time. At DY Keto Watch 4 asks, from an evolution standpoint, why do I get sick when I'm stressed? That is so stupid. I know. It's a little known fact, but when you're chronically stressed, your immune system can be suppressed. But we think it's because when you are in a stress state, your resources are all sent to the immediate processes that are gonna help you escape from the danger. Your muscles, your eyes, your forebrain that's going to help you escape the situation gets all the attention. And things like the immune system are neglected. At Harlot Princess X asks, so like, why does progesterone make peeps horny? Does anyone have the scientific explanation? I'm genuinely curious. Actually, when women are struggling with sex drive, it's estrogen that gets replaced to help that. This is especially true around perimenopause and menopause, where the replacement of estrogen will help with sex drive. At Sputnik, V1234 asks, does coffee actually lower some hormone related to mood also? Coffee has been shown in a large study of 450,000 people to actually improve cardiovascular health and extend life. We know that coffee raises your cortisol levels, but cortisol levels are not always bad. In fact, cortisol is what wakes you up in the morning. And that's why drinking coffee kind of makes you more alert. Just don't go overboard. At Nouveau Vet asks, how do we become insulin resistant? So let's talk about what insulin even is. Insulin is an essential hormone. This is the pancreas right here where all the insulin of our body is created. These beta cells in the pancreas are producing the insulin that will let the glucose into the cell. Glucose is the primary fuel for the brain and the body. You need glucose to function. Say I decided right now to drink a big glass of apple juice. You need to take that blood sugar and put it into your cells so they can use it for fuel or energy. When they want to get into the cells, they need someone to open the door for them. And that's insulin. And if you have a lot of glucose running around, the insulin just can't catch up. And over time, it almost becomes a little deaf. So if you think about it, it's like children screaming all the time and the parents kind of just get used to it and become more deaf to it. That's kind of how insulin is when it's seeing a ton of glucose all the time. At Steve M. Kemp asks, how does cortisol affect body fat levels? This is huge. The relationship between stress and body fat is something we all need to know about. So when cortisol is high, it releases glucose from the cells. And when glucose is hanging around in the bloodstream, you get insulin because insulin lets glucose into the cells. You're basically signaling to your body to create more fat cells by letting that glucose in. So cortisol releases the glucose, insulin goes up, that's a signal to the brain to start storing fat. At Glenn Allen 2010 asks, what is hormone replacement therapy? Hormone replacement therapy is using both synthetic and biological hormones to replace low levels of hormones in the body. Every single woman goes through menopause, which is a drop in the hormone levels. So every woman will go through a phase of life where they will have very low levels of estrogen and progesterone, whereas men, it's more of a gradual decline. Women can get hormone replacement therapy, men can get hormone replacement therapy, and transgendered individuals can get masculizing or feminizing hormone replacement therapy. So if you're a trans woman, you can take things like estrogen and anti-androgen therapy so that your hormones can better match your gender identity. With any kind of medical intervention, you should check with your doctor to check if it's right for you. At AYO underscore IRL asks, why can hormones make you so irritable? So rude. Hormone imbalances 
can feel really frustrating. The week before your period called the late luteal phase or in the media is often called PMS, premenstrual syndrome. It's a time where estrogen and progesterone has dropped. That is the time where you'll often feel more irritable, where you'll feel more depressed. There are other hormones such as testosterone and hyperthyroidism, so high thyroid hormone. These can also make you feel irritable or angry. At DWT Shirt asks, how do hormones and emotions and stuff work? Like, how do our bodies just respond to things? It's insane. Neurotransmitters and hormones are two separate systems, but they're really one, and there's a lot of overlap. So for example, dopamine and serotonin are considered neurochemicals. However, they can create hormonal effects. When you exercise, for example, there are feel-good neurochemicals, and there are certain hormones like estrogen and progesterone and testosterone that can go to the presynaptic area of the neuron and actually send neurochemical messages. So they're very intertwined in many aspects. At Dr. Jandre asks, why does a thyroid have beef with everybody? Like when it's in the mood, it can just screw up all the other systems. So petty. So true, right? The thyroid is this tiny little gland. It has effects all over the body. It affects your metabolism, your body temperature, hair, your nails, your skin. You might be feeling symptoms of low thyroid, which is dry skin, slow heart rate, fatigue and weight gain. Hyperthyroid symptoms would be sweating, weight loss, palpitations. There is no tea or supplement that will fix your thyroid problems. If you suspect that you have a thyroid problem, please go to your doctor and get the simple blood test. At Shifuni asks, when do hormones go back to normal after pregnancy? Asking for a friend. You may see some initial normalization within weeks, but really it takes about six months to get back to the normal levels of hormones after a pregnancy. At Maggie Dolce asks, why am I so tired and why won't my brain produce the awake hormone? This is a great question. I actually wrote a book about it called I'm So Effing Tired. When we're feeling tired all the time, it's usually a sign that there's something off inside of our bodies that's creating inflammation. You're tired because your energy trifecta is damaged. What is the energy trifecta? It's a combination of gut health, immune health, and hormone health. The trifecta tells you to be tired because it's protecting you while you're healing yourself. At ATQ662 asks, can taking hormones help you lose weight? Oh gosh, taking hormones for weight loss is something that's very popular. However, it's not recommended. Hormones do hundreds of things in the body. For example, people will take thyroid hormone even though they're not low on thyroid. And what happens is they end up getting negative side effects like heart palpitations, restlessness, panic attacks. Hormones are not a one-shot deal. You don't want to take hormones for weight loss. At Boopstagram asks, what is hormone therapy for breast cancer? There are breast cancer tumors that have estrogen receptors on them. You can take a medication like tamoxifen to block the estrogen from binding to that receptor, therefore starving that tumor to death. And there's also hormone therapy that you can use for prostate cancer. Those are the two main types of cancers that you can use hormone therapy for. At BLK His Studies asks, did you know that Percy Julian was a pioneer in the chemical synthesis of medicinal drugs such as cortisone, steroids, and birth control pills? I did know that. He is known to be the father of birth control pills and also for cortisone. For example, here's some synthetic steroid, which he created in a lab that could match the steroids in the body. And so you can inject this into a human and it will have effects like steroids in the body. It's pretty amazing. At Not Vishnu asks, how do I stimulate my pituitary gland to give me at least two more inches? This is such a popular question. In the pituitary gland in the brain, there is a hormone called human growth hormone, which in children helps them grow. In adults, it also has other effects like muscle repair, but it doesn't really help you grow anymore because your growth plates are fused. Unfortunately, if you're an adult, even if you add human growth hormone, you're not gonna get taller. 
At Zinzile Sibs asks, I find it wild we have a period every month until menopause. The period stops, but apparently the hormones get worse. Hot flashes, mood swings, weight gain, etc. Why? Perimenopause and menopause is an issue that is underdressed and undertreated in most of the population. Perimenopause happens almost 10 years before menopause. So people will start to get symptoms as early as 35, 36, and then it will go all the way up to 50 and last for a few years during the menopausal transition. That's a lot of years of hot flashes, weight gain, mood changes, etc. So I suggest a combination of food, lifestyle, sleep, stress control, and talking to your doctor about whether hormone replacement therapy might be right for you. So these are all the questions for today. Thank you so much for writing in and starting the conversation about hormones that needs to be had. Thanks for watching Hormone Support.